Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's Morning Prayer Service. This is Thursday, August 5th. The opening sentence is from Psalm 43. Oh, send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. The Confession of Sin on page 12. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed in your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins through repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths to proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. This morning we'll be using the Jubilate, which is found on page 15. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. We now have the Psalm reading and the New Testament reading. The Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 89 verses one through 18. Psalm 89 can be found to begin on page 384 in your Book of Common Prayer. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I ever be proclaiming your faithfulness from one generation to another. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness shall be established in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Your seed will I establish forever. And set up your throne from one generation to another. O Lord. The heavens will praise your wondrous works and your faithfulness in the assembly of the saints. For who in the clouds can be compared unto the Lord? And who among the gods is like unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the council of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those who are round about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is like you? Your faithfulness, most mighty Lord, is round about you. You rule the raging sea. You still the waves when they arise. You have sub subdued Rahab of the deep and destroyed her. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. You laid the foundation of the world and all that is in it. You may have made the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand, and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Blessed are the people, O Lord, who rejoice in you. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Their delight shall be in your name all the day long. And in your righteousness shall they make their boast. 
for you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor, you shall lift up our might. For the Lord is our defense. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson today is a reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, beginning with the sixth chapter, the first verse. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for this morning is a Gloria found on page 107. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Apostles' Creed, page 20. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. A collect for guidance for Thursday. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen have a time for intercession thanksgiving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for the wonderful god that you are we thank you for your love for us your mercy and your eternal faithfulness oh lord continue to build up and bless this church that you have founded and you have already blessed continue to bring the parts of your body together and make us much more than this, the uh, individual parts. Let the sum of our parts be a whole body that brings glory and honor to you. A prayer for the diocese found on page 647 in the Book of Common Prayer. Oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese of the Southwest to be a good and godly fellowship of faith. Bless our Bishop Stephen and other clergy, especially Pete and Bill, our deacon, and all our people. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your son and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. First of all, we thank you for all the many blessings you have poured over us as a diocese and especially over Christ the King. You have guided us and protected us for these many years. And now you've given us a beautiful new home to be in and from which to praise you and honor you. We thank you for that. We ask you to continue to guide us and to show us each day 
how to worship you, how to um, exist and be and have joy in this ocean of love of which the bishop spoke, how to invite others to come join us and to bask, bask in the joy of being in relationship with you. And so we ask, Lord, that you would continue to show us where to place our footsteps, how to be in this neighborhood, um, how to be in this diocese, and how to represent you in ways that bring you honor. Anywhere that we are in error, we ask that you correct us. And anywhere that we are placing our foot correctly, we ask that you strengthen us and give us courage to continue to move forward. Show us how to uh, minister to and support Pete and Beth and our new bishop. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. Lord, we pray for newcomers to Christ the King and ask, Lord, to continue to bless them in their time of discernment, whether to make our church their church home. We pray for uh, those uh, visitors and guests who are contemplating coming. We pray for the nudge of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, for uh, Sunday preparation, of uh, uh, word and sacrament, that your people uh, may receive from you uh, fresh your promises that they know that you are real and you love them and uh, you are challenging all of us uh, to to trust you more to have even more uh, faith in uh, the days ahead uh, in you and uh, that you are the god of our present and the god of our future pray this in jesus name amen the the prayer of St. John Christostom is found on page 26. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.